Herbs have always been a favorite in my garden. They're some of the most practical plants you can grow. Hi, I'm Alan Smith. Coming up next, we'll take a closer look at some of these delightful plants. I'm Alan Smith. You know, I can't imagine my garden without fresh herbs. They possess all the qualities you could ever want in a plant. They look good, they certainly smell good, they taste delicious, and they'll even repel insects. So how much more practical could they be? Today, we'll take a look at some herbs used for repelling insects. I'll share a recipe with you using lavender that works great for keeping away annoying pests such as moths. After this recipe, you'll never want to go back to using mothballs again. Plus, I'll share some creative ways you can mix herbs in your garden to create a beautiful effect. And if you want to grow herbs in a container, we'll cover that too. And we'll travel to the National Arboretum in Washington, D.C., where the display of herbs is absolutely fantastic. And if you've ever wondered where restaurants get those fresh and great tasting herbs in the dead of winter, I'll take you to an indoor farm that makes it all possible. And if you're in the beginning stages of creating your own herb garden, I've got some tips you may find helpful. I also want to show you how to create a fantastic arrangement using some of the most colorful elements of the season. Now, let's find out the secret of having fresh herbs year-round. That's next, so don't go away. You'll find more of Alan's ideas in each issue of Cottage Living Magazine. For a trial issue, call 800-297-1630 or log on to cottageliving.com. Welcome back. Americans are becoming more aware of the importance of eating fresh foods from the garden. Fresh herbs are being used more today than ever before, and even during the winter. With so many chefs demanding freshness and full flavor, it makes you wonder where they go to find it. Janine Winters grows fresh herbs year-round and grows them hydroponically. She ships them fresh from her farm to restaurants across the country. You will not catch a French chef cook with dry, dry herbs, and he'll pay the price because this is what's going to make his restaurant, and that's what makes a restaurant here. Here you control it. Twelve months out of the year, you have your herbs, and they need that consistently for the customers. When they have a dish or require certain herbs, they have to have it, and we are able to give them that. You make something real special, and your clientele in restaurants demand certain herbs in their salad and you know that makes a difference between a salad and a great salad and it's so pretty when you decorate a plate with fresh herbs chef around the world garnish with herbs all the time every dish is an art piece now you don't have to be a great chef to enjoy fresh herbs year-round you can grow your own herbs in containers. Here's a simple container that I put together for growing several different varieties of thyme, but one drawback is watering, so here's a simple solution. It starts with a piece of PVC pipe like this. This one's two inches in diameter, and I just drilled a series of holes along the side of the pipe using a quarter inch bit. Just place a few pieces of a broken clay container over the drainage hole and set the pipe on them. Add about three inches of gravel around the pipe and about four to five inches in the pipe itself. This will help stabilize it as you add the potting soil. Layer the soil evenly until you've covered the bottom row of the pouches. I filled it with a variety of plants, all of which will take full sun and are edible. Everything from the herbs to the purslane. Now to water it, all I have to do is pour the water through the center column and I'll satisfy every plant from top to bottom. In just about every garden, there's an opportunity to set aside an area for growing some fresh herbs. You can grow them in flower beds, containers, or even mix them with other plants, such as roses or brightly colored annuals. There's so many ways to bring them into your backyard. To me, it just seems practical to grow them instead of buying them at the grocery store. We use them every day, whether we realize it or not. For example, the mint flavor in the toothpaste you used this morning 
no doubt came from the leaves of peppermint. If you're interested in growing some of your own herbs, I recommend that you start with something that's not too difficult, like one of the mints. If you grow this plant, you'll find that it's easy to grow a lot of mint and a little more of a challenge to grow just a little because the plants can be very vigorous. You shouldn't let the fact that it is such a vigorous grower scare you away because there's a way to keep it contained. Rather than planting the mint directly into your beds, cut the bottom out of a large plastic nursery container and bury it in the soil. Then plant the mint within the container. This will keep it from spreading and taking over, at least for a while. You just can't believe all the different varieties of mint that are out there with interesting names and subtle aromas, like this one called Hillary's Sweet Lemon Mint. And for those with a sweet tooth, there's chocolate mint. One of my personal favorites is apple mint. I like its fuzzy foliage. It can make a nice addition to a flower arrangement. And when it gets tall and leggy like this, I just cut it back. It causes the plant to grow denser and thicker. Now we've been focusing on the culinary uses of herbs, but what about their beauty? There are several ways they can brighten up your garden. I'll shed some light on that when we come back. An herb is defined as any useful plant. Well, that's a pretty broad definition, but I find myself using herbs in lots of ways, certainly in cooking, and some of them will even repel insects. But you know, there's also other aspects of them that can often be overlooked, and that's their sheer beauty. So while I usually set aside a special place for my herbs, I'm always looking for ways to use them as complements to other plants in my garden. This bronze leaf fennel is a good example of this. I love its texture. What a beautiful color. I like the way it contrasts with this artemisia and these large hydrangeas at the back. And for an aromatic accent, I like using catnip and lavender around the edge of my pool. Both of these herbs make excellent border plantings. Speaking of borders, Parsley and rosemary can make wonderful evergreen borders in parts of the country where winter temperatures are mild. And for colder parts of the country, you might try germander. I like to plant low-growing herbs along paths and walks. I'm using a dwarf oregano along this path, and I'm adding a little sand to the soil to help improve the drainage. Creeping herbs like thyme are ideally suited for planting between stones. And a classic example of this is at the National Arboretum in Washington, D.C. This facility was set up by the Department of Agriculture to help improve our lives through plant research and by introducing new plant varieties that we can plant in our own gardens. Here you'll find a little of everything from Japanese bonsai to antique roses to water gardens, all set in beautifully designed grounds. And if you want to learn a little bit about a new plant, this is the place to come. People seem to be surprised when they come in our gates to know that there's such a large area of green space within the nation's capital. What I have responsibility for is all the gardens here at the Arboretum. We've got 444 acres, um, some very specialized gardens like the herb garden where we're sitting. Well, the work that we do here has great benefits for the general public on many different levels. Our researchers are working to bring the public better varieties to grow in their gardens of ornamental plants. We have a long history in shrub breeding and tree breeding and also in floral crops. The National Herb Garden is two and a half acres. It's supposed to be the largest designed herb garden in the world. And it's divided up into three main parts. There's a knot garden, that's K-N-O-T. It's supposed to look like <laughs> interwoven chains. Right. Then an antique rose garden, and yes, we consider roses herbs. Absolutely. And then we have 10 theme gardens, or specialty beds, on themes such as fragrance and dye and medicines. And we're seeing some of those now. That's right, that's right. right. Now, which theme garden is this one? This is the colonial garden. I see. And this garden contains plants that the colonists brought over with them. I and see. Things that they really couldn't do without. Janet, with the 10 smaller herb gardens within the larger herb garden, how many different varieties do you all grow here at the National Arboretum? We've got about 800 varieties. 800? Yes, in these 10 gardens. Well, of that 800, if you only had five herbs to pick to grow in a small container, what would they be? Certain herbs do better in containers. Right. I think I'd grow thyme, parsley, chives, yeah. dark opal basil. 
Rosemary, You've gotta have <laughs> right. rosemary. Rosemary has such a fresh scent. A little goes a long way, though. It smells cooking. very clean, doesn't it? Yes, pine, pine-like aroma. Now let's switch gears for a second and head to my garden. I wanna show you a creative way to use the gifts of the fall season. That's next, so don't go away. Welcome back. I'm Alan Smith. In today's show, we're taking a look at the various ways herbs can enliven our gardens. A little earlier, we stopped by an indoor herb farm to see how chefs around the country keep fresh herbs in stock year-round. We also took a look at how easy mints, such as peppermint and spearmint, can be grown and managed in the garden. Herb gardening continues to grow in popularity. And why shouldn't it? The plants are beautiful and they taste great. You know, if you want to grow herbs, there are really just a few basic rules of thumb you should follow. When it comes to soil, these plants really don't like soil that's too rich. Many of them come from the Mediterranean region where the soils are actually rocky and sandy. That's one of the reasons I like to grow my herbs in containers like this or in raised beds because I have full control over the soil I'm planting them in. Jeannie Wilson, owner and operator of the Old Columbus Herb Farm, shares more tips on growing herbs successfully. The important thing is full sun, and by full sun, you need at least six hours of sun uh, to grow good, strong herb plants. Um, there's only a few herbs that don't like full sun, so the more sun, the better. The herbs don't need a real rich soil, and when you fertilize them, you can use only half the recommended rate. In fact, more of them, they'll have more fragrance if they um, are not over-fertilized. Another thing is harvesting. You'll want to use your herbs and harvest them. Don't be afraid to cut them and um, use and harvest the herbs because they'll, the plants will be a lot thicker and fuller and more productive if you harvest early in the morning. That's when the essential oils are strongest before the, the sun gets on them and releases them. There's just something about the aroma of herbs that really stimulates the senses. Late in the season, there's another plant that stimulates my sense of smell. And it may be a surprise to you, but it's the chrysanthemum. You see, it leads the charge in my garden when it comes to color, but I also love the fragrance of the foliage. But you may be wondering what mums have to do with herbs. Well, if you know me, you know I love garden history and plant lore. I recently heard a very interesting story about a Chinese emperor who heard about a magic herb that would give him eternal youth. But the herb, located on a remote island, could only be picked by young people. So the emperor sent 24 children out to find this herb, and much to their dismay, all they found was an island where golden chrysanthemums were planted. Today, that symbolizes the Chinese people and their country. In fact, a few years back, I attended the Barberton Mum Fest and got to see hundreds of varieties in beautiful display gardens. What's unique about this entire display is that most of the varieties here are named for women. Well, you can find all the girls here. There's Robin, Marilyn, Beth, Connie, even a Helga. Yes, all the Yoda varieties are named after women. Uh, we have a few varieties that are introduced from cooperating breeders that are not, and it works out very nicely. Uh, we see the mothers and the grandmothers, they bring their children, and they put them right next to the sign and sit them down there and take a picture of them and that then they get their pictures titled. <laughs> in fact, I just made a, met a young lady this morning. Her name was Nicole and I said, oh, we have a Nicole over in the garden. She said, yes, I know. You know, the whole name and flower association is a lot of fun, but it's important to remember that mums are a great way to extend color in our gardens well into the fall. What characteristics do you look for in the design, as it were, of the flowers themselves? I think we're always looking to expand on uh, the total color range. Whiter white, yellows, corals, more salmon colors. You have a variety uh, originally like Bravo, for example. Bravo was one of the first better reds that we produced, but Bravo faded very rapidly. So how do we get something that's early in the season and that that will give us a beautiful red color and hold that color. Hold the color, right. So now we came along with Helen, which uh, holds its color a lot better. Uh, today, Helen is our number one selling variety throughout the country.
Now if you're looking for a fun way to use chrysanthemums as a cut flower, or any other flower of the season for that matter, try using a pumpkin as a vase or a container. As you can see, I've taken the top off this one. I'm just cleaning it out. It'll make the perfect seasonal container for this bouquet I've collected from the garden. Now let's get back to herbs. After the break, I'll show you how to make your own moth repellent using lavender, so don't go away. Welcome back. We've been taking a look at the beauty of herbs and what they can bring to the table and our gardens, but there are other ways you can use them as well. I'm constantly amazed by the power and versatility of herbs. So many times we find that they can be a safe solution to many problems. Let me give you an example. Have you ever pulled out your wool clothes or a favorite wool blanket to find that they've been damaged by moths? Certainly disappointing, isn't it? Well, you can actually use a blend of herbs to repel these powdery winged insects. Some of these herbs are common garden plants we've grown for years like Santalina, Artemisia, Rosemary, and Lavender. By following a simple recipe, you can create a moth repellent that's a good alternative to moth balls. Start by combining one cup of cedar wood shavings to one cup of dried orange peel and a half a cup of whole cloves. Then add 20 drops of lavender oil and 20 drops of orange oil. The shavings and orange peel act as a fixative for the oils. Blend these ingredients and package them in little muslin bags for your clothes, drawers, trunks, and closets. Remember, this only repels the moths. Proper storage of your woolens is still important. By the way, if when you're removing your clothes from storage, you suspect they're infested with moths, just throw them in the dryer on a high heat. The heat will kill the eggs and larvae. You see, it's not the adult moth that does the damage, it's its worm-like larva that feeds on your fabrics. Well, as you can see, I just about have this finished. I'm just lowering the arrangement right down into the pumpkin like so. Now, you can put the water in the pumpkin directly or use a glass jar as a liner. Well, that's it for today's show. As we've seen, herbs can play such a practical and beautiful role in our lives. Any of the information in today's show is available on my website. That's pallensmith.com. Until next time, from the garden, I'm Alan Smith. In this garden I dream of a bed of flowers, bluebirds sing. Of the beauty all around us And every time the sun comes out I can't help but smile Oh, no, I can't help but smile